This week's theme is disaster response. Uh, I'd now like to introduce our third speaker. So this is Matt Miles, and he's the Principal for Environmental Information, the South Australia Department of Environment and Water. Over to you. Thank you very much, Emily. And um, thanks to everyone for turning up and, and thanks to AXA and, uh, and all the sponsors for making this possible. It's um, great to be able to present this stuff. It's gonna go across to share a screen. Okay, so my name is Matt. I, I work for the South Australian government, um, a state government here in, in, uh, in South Australia. And the Department for Environment and Water, my role in there in the science group is to look after our, um, our environmental databases. Um, my team looks after our biodiversity information and does a lot with um, spatial information um, to help us answer questions um, and monitor the environment and the species in the environment. There's lots, there's lots that needs to go on and it's been a, a, a couple of great um, examples um, preceding. Okay, so we've had a couple of mentions of the bushfires already. Um, earlier um, this year and late last year, there were some horrific bushfires right across, uh, right across our country. Uh, and I'm focusing today on the Kangaroo Island uh, bushfires. Um, for those not familiar where Kangaroo Island is, Kangaroo Island's uh, an island to the south, southwest of, of Adelaide. This is uh, sort of the, the southeastern sort of third of the Australian continent. And, and you can see Kangaroo Island there um, hanging off the gulfs um, of South Australia. It's, um, it's about 150 k's long, uh, 50 k's wide. It, it really is a wilderness area. Um, the western end of the island uh, in fact, has national parks and, and wilderness areas. It's quite a remote place. Um, it, it is a 45-minute boat ride uh, to get there. Uh, you can fly, uh, but it is it is kind of a, um, a rural community um, with a lot of um, national parks and, and fantastic natural environments um, uh, over, over there. This is a satellite image taken of the uh, of the island once the fire had been put out in uh, sort of mid-February 2020. And that yellow line is the extent of the, of the fire. Uh, it's almost 50% of the island that's burned there. And I don't know if you can see my, my mouse here, but that western end of the island, uh, Rebecca Soars, it, it says there, and Flinders Chase National Park. Uh, they're both enormous um, areas of uh, natural scrub, uh, natural native vegetation. Um, and, and that's where one of the fires started. The biggest fire started uh, in the middle of there. There was a couple of fires that joined up uh, and then it moved uh, eastward to really take over and, and burn through a lot of um, agricultural land. Uh, there's plantation forestry through there um, and lots of farms uh, and, and a few scattered communities um, along the coast as well as in the middle of the island um, as well. It's about a population of about 3,000 on Kangaroo Island. Um, highly affected. It was um, some of the worst fires we've seen, certainly in South Australia, um, and uh, caused a, a lot of damage, obviously. Um, so in terms of recovery afterwards, uh, there, was, um, there was, of course, rapid response that was required. So there was emergency uh, activities for uh, not only the, the humans and, and the communities around the place, um, but looking after the wildlife as well. Uh, there was some um, emergency fencing done for to try and um, maintain some habitats for the KI Dunart. Um, and obviously there was a need to start looking at um, uh, feral uh, animal control uh, as well, because um, once the, uh, there's, there's lots of cats on the island basically. So uh, that was the rapid response. In terms of longer term, there was a need for um, all of the people who had been studying and, and managing the the species and the environment and the landscapes on Kangaroo Island to come together and work out a bit of a long-term recovery plan. Uh, and so there's been some great work, uh, um, lots of great partnerships between um, individual scientists, between non-government organisations and between uh, the, the governments, the state and federal, uh, to come up with this recovery plan. Part of that recovery plan obviously um, relies on, on a national, uh, natural regeneration of the bush, which is happening now. And in fact, there's been quite significant rains on the island uh, since the fires have gone out and through, through this winter, which of course has uh, erosion issues um, because the, the landscape was so denuded of, uh, of vegetation. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the, the vegetation is, is coming back. Recovery plans for a number of threatened species were already in place uh, and had been being worked on uh, over previous decades. So we did have some understanding of the, the kinds of species that were 
um, in trouble, if you like, um, on the island, and they've been actively being worked on. Part of uh, one of the major ones is the, the Kangaroo Island Dunart, uh, and that's why we, we called our, um, our project the KI Dunart um, Expeditions in, in Digivolt that we'll get to in just a moment. Um, and so we set out to um, put some cameras into the bush, particularly into the unburnt areas, really to see um, how many of those critters uh, had survived and, uh, and uh, where they were, um, and if in fact any of them had survived. And part of that, uh, we knew that we were going to be out there taking photos for uh, you know, 18 months or two years, and that's a lot of photos. Uh, and so we uh, embarked on a, um, a, a collaboration with Digivol through the, the uh, Australian Museum um, to encourage citizen scientists to hop online and, and help us out with identifying uh, the animals in our photos. And I'll, I'll get to that. That's what I'm going to focus talking on uh, uh, in uh, this talk. I've already mentioned, mentioned the feral animal control, and there's more information about uh, the other activities that are happening in terms of recovery um, on our website listed just there. So the top three um, species, uh, threatened species, uh, that are listed nationally as threatened species, um, and, and, and nicely segueing from the previous talk about the glossy black cockatoo, um, been a lot of work and making sure that there are um, good and healthy casuarinas on, on Kangaroo Island for the, for the glossy blacks. They don't have the, the um, option to fly to any other cities. Um, they're pretty well contained to the island. I mean, in addition to that, we've got the Kangaroo Island and endemic species of echidna um, that's there and, and the little K.I. Dunart, small marsupial uh, that hangs out in the, uh, the western end of the island largely. Um, it's been difficult to spot uh, for many years. Um, this is a, a map of the, the, the modelled Dunart habitat. So this gives us the best idea um, based on where uh, Dunarts had been seen previously and then the kind of uh, kind of bush that they live in, the low uh, scrubby um, coastal systems and uh, low heathy uh, vegetation of that west, western part of the island. And so we were looking to put cameras particularly into the unburnt areas. So you'll see that black line is the, the, the burnt area and you know, that little inset map on the right is showing uh, where we went and installed um, 100 um, motion sensor cameras. Uh, so there's two cameras at every site. There's a uh, a drift line, a 30 metre long piece of small um, um, uh, like fly wire um, that sort of funnels uh, animals you know, to go past the camera and there's a camera at, each, uh, at either end of that, um, that little fence. So this is where we were focusing. Uh, we wanted to know um, uh, what animals we would see, uh, what uh, both native and feral um, that, that had persisted, had survived and, and persisted uh, after the fires. So we got in touch with the, the Australian Museum and the Digivol crew, and um, we've just had a fantastic response. It's been, uh, it's been spectacular. Um, if you want to um, experience Digivol, there's the, the URL is just there. Um, we're up to our 27th uh, expedition here. And as you can see, I took this screenshot earlier today, we're up to 1,009 volunteers, 84% um, of whom are outside South Australia. So um, this is just a fantastic um, example of uh, people being able to participate and basically visit uh, an environment like the, the, the wild west end of, of KI, um, you know, from their, from their lounge room. And particularly with COVID around these days and lockdown, um, there's a lot of people um, who have got some time on their hands and, and, and not able to actually get out and about. And these are really, um, it, it is really fascinating to be able to just click through these photos and, and look at what's going on. Uh, it, with the fauna um, in those areas. You really do feel like you're going for a walk in the bush um, in, in your own lounge room. So um, it's fantastic that we've been able to reach, you know, a thousand people, um, most of whom are outside SA, give them an experience on, on KI and, um, and, and to, for them to be uh, participating and contributing to our ability to monitor uh, the recovery of the, of the fauna on the island after the, after the fires. So this is the, the list of species. Uh, I've taken this from the, the sort of the tutorial that you, that you run through before you, you start. This is the list of species that, we're, that you might see in the photos. So there's quite a few um, uh, mammals um, and, uh, and some uh, lizards. Uh, there are some ferals in there as well as, as birds. And this gives you a bit of an indication of the size difference. So 
Um, we're really looking for those, those tiny little guys down the end, the pygmy possums, particularly the K.I. Dunart and the bandicoots, we're definitely very uh, interested in as well. Uh, but this gives you a feel for the fact that we're also going to see uh, possums, cats, uh, Rosenberg goannas, uh, possibly koalas, um, plenty of wallabies and kangaroos also who are uh, running around uh, in front of these cameras. So uh, this is the, the process and, and as it turns out, it's quite, uh, quite an involved process that takes some, um, quite a bit of support to, and data management to get these, uh, to get this from, from the start to the finish line. Um, we, we set the camera traps, obviously, no worries. We set the camera traps, we've got people who are out there retrieving those photos and then uploading those to, to Digivolt. There is uh, internet connectivity issues on Kangaroo Island, it's terrible. Uh, so we're sometimes having to rely on, on hard drives in people's backpacks uh, coming back to, to do that. Um, but then we, once we've put them up as uh, expeditions on Digifold, the citizen science go through them and tag them as you know, small mammals, birds, reptiles. And then we have a validation process where experts go through and cheat, in particular the, um, particularly the K.I. Dunarts and the small mammals, because it is quite tricky to tell the difference between a, a pygmy possum and a Dunart and a house mouse, for example. And we do need um, uh, uh, validated verification uh, of those. And then we, we get the data um, back, and I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of that um, in a second. Just to note, though, that um, after we've retrieved the photos from the, tra the camera traps, there's uh, staff on the island who do a quick check um, with a focus on donuts and cats. So they are uh, kind of rapidly flicking through the photos just to see, have we have we captured a, a donut or a cat because of the, the, the feral cat uh, Feral control um, activities going on. They really need to get out there um, and, and and try and capture those cats um, so that they are not eating uh, eating the wildlife. So the value that the citizen science are adding here is that um, whilst our staff are looking rapidly at what's going on and particularly just identifying two species, we're getting a comprehensive listing of all of the species from all of the photos. We're going through every single photo now. Um, I hope you can see this uh, a little bit. Obviously, you've got a list of the species on the left there. And across the top, those numbers, seven, eight, nine, that's the week of the year. And what this is saying is that how many days in that week was one of those species spotted on, a, uh, on an image? And this really gives us a, a, a way of looking at um, re-return of the, of the species to that site, um, the persistence of the species in oh, that site. That. You start to get signals. No worries. You start to get signals of um, seasonality of some of the uh, um, uh, when the goannas are reappearing as it as it warms up as well, and when they're going into hibernation. So this is really useful information for our, our ecologists to understand. It really is a, a new way of monitoring the environment um, and giving us fresh insights. One of the really um, more interesting areas as well that came through is the birds. We weren't really focusing on birds, but we're starting to get pictures of birds in the bush that normally are very cryptic species and we only manage to um, detect them through their, uh, through their songs and their, and their sounds uh, in the bush. So that's been a fantastic way of uh, getting not only some photos, but for people to be involved in seeing species that is very difficult to see even if you're visiting the, uh, visiting the area. This is the last slide, uh, just again to finish off the, the enormity of the, uh, of, the, of the fire that was there. And we do have a fabulous um, story map um, developed through using um, Esri's ArcGIS story map. And I shall, I'll give you the, the link to that. People might like to go there and have a look. It tells a great story about what happened on the island and how we're uh, recovering, uh, helping the, the landscape to recover. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Matt. That was very interesting, horrified by that photo, as I'm sure everybody is. Um, so thank you, that's all of our speakers for this evening. Thanks so much, everybody.